Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the third Sunday of Easter, and in today's Gospel, the risen Lord appears again to His disciples. They are still troubled. Questions arise in their hearts. And so the Lord assures them, Touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. Then Jesus eats with them and, as in the past, guides them again to an understanding of who He is. Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in His name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The risen Lord opens their mind and commissions them to give witness to Him. The Lord does not give up on His disciples. Easter is about divine persistence to renew persons and the world. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you, the author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what He had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that His Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The Word of the Lord. Let your face shine upon us, Alleluia. Lord, let your face shine upon us, Alleluia. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Just God, you relieve me when I'm in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine upon. wonders for his faithful ones. The Lord will hear me when I call on him. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Alleluia. Lord, let your face shine upon of your countenance 
sadness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Alleluia. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Alleluia. As soon as I lie down. For peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine upon. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only. But for those of the whole world, the way we may be sure that we know Him is to keep His commandments. Those who say, "I know Him," but do not keep His commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps His word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Divine persistence. On this third Sunday of Easter, we want to see how God is quite tenacious in Jesus Christ. God does not want to give up on us. God does not want to give us give up on our societies, our cultures, and on human history. God does not want to leave us alone. This is the promise of Easter. The risen Lord will not give up on us. In the first reading, we see how Peter, now now a changed person, from someone who uh, had. Uh, a wrong image of Jesus as Messiah, and then later on even denied that he was one of his followers, with the gift of the uh, encounter with the risen Lord and, of course, the Holy Spirit, now he testifies. And he is able now to read even scriptures leading up to Jesus in the eyes of faith. And there is one particular interpretation of the history of Jesus given by Peter that I want to single out. And it is what I said uh, earlier. Divine persistence, the tenacity of God, or what we might even call the stubbornness of God. Stubbornness in what sense? In his persistence, to save us, according to Peter. Well, no, Jesus came and the people rejected him, but God glorified him. He was condemned to death and people chose a criminal to be freed instead of Jesus. He was put to death. But God raised him from the dead. 
And then Peter said, oh, I know your leaders, you people acted in ignorance. No? But God fulfilled his word and his promise in spite of your ignorance. In other words, we people do this, we do that, we do that. And sometimes out of ignorance or sometimes out of malice. We reject God's ways, but God will not give up. Especially when our rejection of God's ways will lead to our ruin. God does not want that. So God will persevere, will persist in the fulfillment of his will, which is to save us. The one we rejected, Jesus, God uh, raises from the dead and glorifies as our Lord. And in his name, we have repentance of our sins. Oh, we should be grateful that our God is that tenacious and persistent. Otherwise, we will all just be condemned. We will all just be ruined. In the second reading, St. John again also tells us you know, that uh, we are sinners. Yes, we are uh, favored by God, but we can still choose to sin. No? And if you say, I have no sin, then you are a liar. No, A part of our being uh, children of God, being righteous, is the sincere sincerity with which we admit that we are tempted and we also sin. Ah, but here, the divine persistence enters. St. John says, If you sin, do not despair. Because we have an advocate before God, Jesus. We sin, but our sin is not the end of our personal story. Our person is not captured by our sin. Thanks to our advocate before the Father, Jesus. Now, this does not mean that we can continue sinning <laughs> anyway we have an advocate before the Father, Jesus. No. But it is a way of encouraging us. You know, turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Learn from Him. And be as persistent as God in love. If sin drives us to hate brothers and sisters, and to turn away from God, turn to our advocate and be persistent in turning to our advocate who will teach us how to love. My dear brothers and sisters, we thank God for always following us and being there when ruin comes our way. But we have to do our share Will we also be persistent, as persistent as God in finding the way to salvation? I hope we will be. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, He stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, 
because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord Divine Persistence We have been reflecting on this uh, element of Easter, the triumph of the risen Lord over sin and death. We see this in the readings for today, how this triumph of the risen Lord can be interpreted as the, the persistence of God to save us, even when in our personal histories, in our communal histories, there are tendencies or even decisions no, on our part to give up on God and to take the path of ruin. But God, no, in the risen Lord, will say, no, no. My, my desire is to save you. In the first reading, St. Peter gives us a wonderful interpretation of Jesus, the, the Christ event. People rejected Jesus, but God glorified Jesus. The people chose a criminal to be freed and condemned Jesus to death, but God raised him from the dead. People acted in ignorance, but God fulfilled what he has promised. And now, in Jesus' name, there is repentance for sin. God will always respond to our frailty and our wrong decisions with an offer of salvation in Jesus Christ. That's how persistent God is. God will not say, okay, okay, you're giving up, I also give up. God will try and try and try. If Jesus stops trying, then the resurrection is in question. In the second reading, we have the same thing. St. John is quite realistic. He says, let us be honest. No, we are tempted and we are sinful. But that is not the end of our story. When we sin, we have an advocate before the Father in heaven, our risen Lord. So turn to him and learn from him how to love. No? So uh, it's a question of God already giving us you know, the path. But will we turn to that path? Who is Jesus himself? In the gospel from St. Luke, we have the uh, sequel to the experience of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. We know that they had been granted this marvelous uh, companionship of the risen Lord, whom they did not recognize. The risen Lord explained to them again the scriptures, and their hearts burned within them. Then he broke the bread with them, and they recognized that it was the risen Lord. They went back to Jerusalem to recount their stories. Now the gospel. What was the reaction of the other disciples? After hearing this, there's already the testimony no, of their fellow disciples who had been granted the visit, the apparition of the risen Lord. 
Look at what happened. The risen Lord appears to the other disciples. No. Bear in mind, they already had the witness of their two friends. Huh? And what was their reaction? They were terrified. They were startled. They thought it was a ghost. You see, the testimony of their friends was not enough. No? They still saw a ghost. And Jesus had to convince them. No, no. If, if, if I were Jesus, I would have said, ah, okay, <laughs> time to leave you. You are a hopeless case. No, but no, uh, Jesus, the risen one, is persistent. He showed them his hands, his wounds, and say, look, am I a ghost? <laughs> I have a body. And then he asked for food just to convince them that he is risen. For a ghost doesn't have a body that can eat. No? So he persisted, even in little acts. He addresses them, even in, in what we might call very simple and even banal things. But God will persist in that, showing his hands and his feet, asking for food. And then he explained to them again the scriptures. No? His, their minds are not clear. Their minds have not been fully grasped by this event. And so he patiently guides them. He does not give up on them. And then he tells them, listen carefully. Listen carefully to the word of God and how it is fulfilled in me. You will be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Of this, Wow. He trusts in them. That's how persistent he is. He does not give up on anyone. You are frail. You are weak. You are short in understanding. You misunderstand Jesus. But Jesus will patiently guide you. And will even give you the honor of calling you to be his witness. My dear brothers and sisters, this Easter Sunday, this third Sunday of Easter, let us praise God for being patient and persistent with us through the recent Lord. We thank the Lord for not giving up on us. But let us ask ourselves, do we give up so easily on ourselves, on other people, one mistake of one people, we condemn. When we see the same, uh, same uh, wounds and the same uh, uh, evils happening, we give up. Are we an Easter people? Let us be as tenacious and persistent in hope as our risen Lord. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. We have reached the third installment of our series on Easter moments. Last week, we learned from Thomas, who initially was skeptical of his fellow disciples' testimony of the resurrection. But the risen Lord came to confirm that he indeed is the crucified Jesus, now victorious over death. And thanks to the risen Lord who never got tired of his guiding and strengthening his disciples, Thomas was able to proclaim the risen one as Lord and God. His testimony is one of those that help us believe in the resurrection today. Today, let us reflect on the Easter moments of the downcast and troubled disciples. On the road to Emmaus, some downcast disciples encountered the risen Lord, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing Him. And the Lord asked them, The 
questions prompted them to recount what had happened. They gave a summary of Jesus' public ministry, passion, death, and resurrection, and how their expectations were not met. Then the Lord explained to them how the Messiah should suffer, and they recognized Him when He broke the bread with them, which then moved them to return to Jerusalem and reunite with the fellow disciples. An Easter moment then comes when our hearts burn as the risen Lord opens the Scriptures for us and breaks bread with us, prompting us to reunite with fellow disciples to testify to His resurrection. And then in today's Gospel, the risen Lord visits His troubled disciples in Jerusalem asking them, By asking them such questions, the risen Lord was leading His disciples to reflect, What is keeping me anxious? The risen Lord understands the humanity of His disciples. And so even though they cannot fully articulate what's keeping them anxious, Jesus keeps on teaching them again, illuminating their minds again about His truth. Then the Lord told them, Friends, an Easter moment is when the risen Lord trusts in us despite our anxieties and follies, with an important role to become His witnesses. He also sends the Holy Spirit to assist them in their mission. That's a gift of Easter. Lord, always open the Scripture for us, that we may have confidence in witnessing to You. Move us always to the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist, that we may always recognize you. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how have you experienced God's patience and persistence in forming you? Papano mo naranasan ang pagtityaga at pagkamasigasig ng Diyos sa paghuhubog niya sa iyo? The second point is, how can we be persistent in our response to God? Papano naman tayo magiging masigasig? sa ating pagtugon sa Diyos. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as Your Word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.